sandwiches. Have you checked out what is below this outfit? This doesn't come from sandwiches. Here are the 10 most harmful foods people keep eating. Part three, no matter how many times they get knocked down, these tasty foods are some of the worst things we could possibly eat. Well, they can't all be winners, can they? Anything bright orange is insulting. Oh man, all the orange soda spilled out of my cereal. Anything, and we mean anything, that's been artificially brightly colored is not something you should eat. This includes cheese, cheese puffs, potato chips, all kinds of candy, literally anything you can think of that has an unusual hue that does not look like it has a natural shade. We're probably not teaching you anything when we say that these foods are extremely unhealthy and contain a lot of salt and chemicals, which in the long run can be very harmful. Many dietitians consider these orange snacks to be the definition of junk food, you know, with a capital J. If we take Cheetos, for example, there's a reason why it's hard to stop eating them once you've started. I gotta have more. I gotta have more. Not only is the sound you make when you bite into one designed to get you hooked, according to a study in the Journal of Sensory Studies, but they are also doused with MSG, a flavor enhancer that's been shown to increase appetite and make foods taste more delicious. Maybe he got freaky with some Cheetos. Swing and a miss, Webster. Next. Reduced fat peanut butter. Do you eat some peanut butter or something? Yeah, you sound like a dog with peanut butter on the roof of your mouth. As good as peanut butter can be, everybody knows that it's really high in fat, which isn't always a good thing. This is why many people turn to reduced fat peanut butter, even though they really shouldn't. You see, you shouldn't be fooled by the healthy sounding name or its low fat content. Reduced fat peanut butter isn't healthier and contains just as many calories as its regular form. Peanut butter man now, eh, sir? Yes. <laughs> in fact, it has even more sugar, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of making a better version. Since they need to strip all of the natural fats from the peanuts, they need to replace it with something, and that something is a big pile of sugar and salt. That's to make up for what would most likely be a flavorless bland spread. So with reduced fat peanut butter, the problem doesn't come from the peanuts themselves, they're actually a good source of protein and fiber, but more from what they need to add to the mix to make it taste okay. A little piece of advice, skip the low fat peanut butter and go for the real creamy kind, carefree. I thoroughly enjoy this peanut butter. Barbecue sauce. Not bad. The star of every cookout, the condiment of choice for people in search of both the smoky and the sweet, an overall classic barbecue sauce. But there is one teeny tiny problem. It's probably the most unhealthy habit you could have. What in the devil's name is this? Portobello mushrooms. Where's the steak? Most popular bottled barbecue sauces are packed with an impressive amount of added sugar and salt, which jacks up the calorie and sodium count faster than you would imagine. Take Sweet Baby Ray's Honey Barbecue Sauce, for instance. It has 15 grams of sugar and 70 calories in just two tablespoons. And we all know we never just use two tablespoons of this delicious nectar. It's literally like pouring almost four sugar packets directly onto your chicken wings. Stop double dipping! To add to the cons column, the majority of sauces are made with even more highly processed ingredients like high fructose corn syrup, which has been linked to an increased risk of heart disease, caramel coloring, and preservatives like potassium sorbate and sodium benzoate. But don't worry, you don't have to forsake barbecue sauce altogether, there's still hope. Just read the labels carefully and find the brands with the lowest amount of added sugars. Movie theater popcorn. Cheetos has popcorn? Now? Hey, I'm gonna need you to... Never mind. Yes, going to the movies is always more fun when you're loaded with snacks and drinks, particularly the very tempting popcorn. Forget the fact that the prices have spiked so much in the last few years, popcorn is now ridiculously expensive, but it's also ridiculously bad for you. Most movie theaters will pop their kernels with coconut oil, an oil that's more than 90% saturated fat, a higher percentage than butter. You can never have too much 
butter. Saturated fat is the type of fat that everyone should try to limit in their diets as much as possible, so you can see how that could already be a problem. Now, considering that a large tub of popcorn at Regal Cinemas equals roughly 20 cups of greasy popcorn, just imagine the amount of fat that's in your bucket. You'll ingest around 1,200 calories, 980 milligrams of sodium, and, well, 60 grams of saturated fat. Yikes! And that's not even counting all of the additional butter flavoring they add on top. If you're not ready to say goodbye to this iconic movie theater snack, all hope is not lost. I like movies. I'll buy the popcorn. All you have to do is make some at home, preferably not from a microwave bag, and add a reasonable amount of butter and you should be good. American cheese. You know what they call a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? You add it to your burgers, your sandwiches, your grilled cheese. American cheese is at the center of so many delicious classic foods. They're like miniature Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. They're delicious. But let's just say that American cheese, if we can even call it cheese, isn't the most natural product there is. Kraft Singles, the ones you use to create all of your culinary masterpieces, are packed with a bunch of harmful ingredients like sodium citrate, known to cause muscle spasms and isn't recommended for people with kidney problems. Oh dear God, this man's kidneys have exploded. Add to this sodium phosphate used to prevent crystallization of meat and dairy products and linked to an increased risk of bone demineralization and osteoporosis, and there you have American cheese. As for the is it really cheese question, the answer is yes and no. According to Jay Cowan, a registered nutritionist, American cheese contains less than 51% of cheese curds, which makes it more of a cheese product. The rest is made up of preservatives, whey, and other additives, giving it an absurdly long shelf life. To top it all off, the added amount of sodium guarantees to raise blood pressure and making it a very dangerous product to overindulge in. Instant ramen noodles. Abracadabra! <gasps> Affordable, easy to prepare, and so delicious, ramen noodles are definitely a pantry essential for any broke college student. However, nostalgia and tastiness aren't the only things that this cup of noodles packs. It also packs some destructive ingredients you should stay as far away from as you can. Save yourself. Not only do they lack important nutrients like protein, fiber, and a bunch of vitamins, but just like all packaged foods, they also lack antioxidants and phytochemicals. Flavor enhancers and preservatives like MSG and TBHQ are also loaded in the tiny packaging, only making things worse. Then, of course, there's the whole sodium situation. This is really good. No, come on, you should try my dad's secret ingredient soup. To put this all into perspective, the original cup noodles packs more than 1,000 milligrams of sodium, almost the entire recommended daily intake. According to studies and research, eating a lot of instant ramen could be responsible for a lot of health-related issues, like significantly increased risk of metabolic syndrome, weight gain, liver damage, and increased risk of heart failure. But since they're so cheap and uncomplicated to prepare, it's unlikely people will stop eating them anytime soon, even though they really should. Pickles. I'm Pickle Rick! If you're a fan of pickles, we're sorry to break this to you, but they're not as harmless as they might look. Don't get us wrong, they can be healthy. You just need to pick out your jars thoughtfully when at the supermarket. You see, many brands feel the need to have the greenest pickles in the neighborhood and will add a bunch of harmful ingredients to earn this apparently prestigious title. You truly are the king of kings. Only by adding all those dyes to the mix, not only does it add zero nutritional value whatsoever, but it also takes away most of the health benefits from the already green vegetables. Brands like Vlasic use yellow dyes, mainly yellow number no. 5, or tartrazine, which has been linked to causing hyperactivity in children, all to make it more appealing. Who would have thought that fluorescent pickles would be more appetizing than natural dark green ones? And that's not the only thing they add in that small jar. 
polysorbate 80, the same emulsifier used in diet ice creams and linked to cancer in mice, and sodium benzoate, shown to damage mitochondria, are also part of the mix. Can I eat the pickle? Well, there's a lot of salt in it, but yeah, it's fine. I mean, it is a vegetable. With that being said, it's not impossible to find pickles without any of the green additives, but you should still be aware of the high sodium content and steer clear of them if you have any high blood pressure or cardiovascular issues. Fruit juice. I didn't know what I was putting into my body. Fruit juice is the best example of proving that just because it has the word fruit in the name, it doesn't automatically make it healthy. A little surprising indeed, since fruit juice is usually associated with the healthiest beverage options. And yet, you might as well be drinking a glass full of sugar. Obviously, if you opt for a 100% fruit juice, it's a way better choice than going with overly sugary drinks like, let's say, Sunny D. I got some purple stuff, some Sunny D. As soon as I say Sunny D, all the kids go, yeah! Just don't be fooled by its seemingly good nutrition facts. Even the all-natural Welch's grape juice isn't all that innocent. It still packs up to 36 grams of sugar for one cup, which is the equivalent of four Krispy Kreme glazed donuts. I want that purple stuff. And even though this sugar is natural, your body doesn't make the distinction. Plus, the majority of the sweetness in fruit juices comes from fructose that's been associated with the development of visceral adipose tissue in overweight people, or in other words, belly fat. So in short, fruit juice can unexpectedly be one of the most harmful things you can put in your body. And the only way to avoid all of that useless sugar is to make the juice yourself. And even then, moderation is key. Raw oysters. It's like eating a mermaid. <laughs> Life is your oyster, as long as you don't eat it raw, that is. Undercooked oysters, or practically any kind of seafood, is about the least safe thing you could ever do, and here's why. Oysters are filled with bacteria and viruses and can put you at risk for infections, more commonly vibriosis. What? No way! Vibriosis is caused by certain strains of Vibrio bacteria that are found in coastal waters where oysters live. Symptoms of infection may include a few days of vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps, as well as skin rashes and blisters, shaking, chills, and high fever. But in more serious cases, like for people with liver disease, diabetes, or compromised immune systems, it can lead to sepsis, shock, and death. He was a bold man that first ate an oyster. Hot sauce, lemon juice, or wine will not kill Vibrio bacteria, and neither will trying to spot the infected ones from the bunch. That's impossible. The only thing that can kill them is to cook them properly. Of course, cooking the oysters doesn't guarantee that all the bacteria and viruses they contain will be killed, but it still eliminates a lot of the risk. Coffee creamer. Pretty please, with sugar on top. Some people like their coffee black, and some people like to drown the caffeine in tons of milk and sugar. But if you're part of the good old coffee creamer club, you might want to put down your jug and listen closely. Yes, they might be tasty, but they're also really bad news for your health, especially the flavored ones. Water, sugar, and hydrogenated oil, also known as trans fat, are usually the first three ingredients in the most popular brands of cream which is less than the ideal way to start your day right. I like my pumpkin spice lattes extra hot, so please comply with my request. In fact, consuming too much trans fat increases the risk of raising your bad cholesterol, or LDL. Again, it's not every coffee creamer that is this bad, and finding fat-free ones is possible, but in any case, using traditional milk, whether dairy or plant-based, is still the best way to go. Nevertheless, a spoonful of coffee creamer once in a while obviously isn't the end of the world, as long as it's in moderation. Are you not aware that I get farty and bloated with a foamy latte? Try out more great videos. Just tap or click. First time here? Then leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.